Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wookie, and I'm back for another fake Grand Order video! Happy Father's Day, I think, when this came out. Yes, <laughs> this video is being recorded early, but it's Father's Day. So, shout out to all the dads. Uh, what are we going to be talking about today? Nothing dad-related. We're here to talk about the fact that uh, they announced the Watch Caldea Broadcast Station U.S. Branch Light Volume 1, which means it's very likely that we're going to be getting the next part of the story for Lost Belt um, 6, which would be Part 2. So we're going to be talking about the banner that comes with that for Avalon Le Fay Lost Belt Release Part 2. A.K.A. Summoning Campaign 3, because Castoria is Summoning Campaign 2. So this is a the third one. That's how we get numbers. Yeah, the, the numbers. Sure. So let's go over them. There's only two units in this one. It is uh, Fairy Knight Lancelot, a.k.a. Tom Lynn Lancelot, a.k.a. Melusane, which I can finally say these damn knights' name now that I realize they're not story spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> this is wasted so many years not saying their names. And Percival. So let's start with Percival. The man, the big beefy man that he is. Percival, the Holy Knight of the Dove. I've never read their AKAs before. Uh, Percival, the White Light, and Percival, the Mighty. May as well, just for him, special occasion. He is a Lancer unit. He is a one quick, two arts, two buster, three hits quick, two hits arts, three hits buster, five hit extra. And his, uh, well, he has a different for when he's an Avalon Le Fay NPC. I didn't know that. Active skill. His first skill is Protection of the Holy Grail A. Increases his own arts performance for three turns and then charges his own MP gauge and then increases the party's MP damage for three turns. For arts, it's 30%. For NP, it's 20%. And for MP damage, it's 20%, which is pretty nice. Not bad. Second skill is a 500% chance to draw attention to all enemies to self for by 300% for three turns, and then also increase your his own MP generation rate when taking attacks for three turns. 50% up defense MP rate. Wait, is that the same as... MASH? I know MASH has a crazy one on her good form. Let me, let me look at it. Doom, 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 doom. Okay, no, never mind her. I forget. It is nowhere close to Mash's MP generation, which is 400%. I never <laughs> knew how stupid that was. That explains a whole lot. Man, that mode is so good. Anyway, it's still, 50% is nice. Uh, third skill, but only it being defense is kind of... A, how long does it last? Three turns? Okay, for... For, for three turns, that's fair. Mash only lasts as a single turn. And his default, Light of Salvation B, which is his third skill, grants one alley invincibility for one turn, recovers their HP, and it's 2,000 heal. And his passive skills are Magic Resistance B+, and Writing C+. There's a pen skill for the third skill is an anti-lancer attack damage amplitude, which is increased against own oh, attack against lancer enemies, so never trust anyone, not even yourself, on this. And his noble phantasm is the Longuous, Long, Longuinous, Longinous, Count Zero, the Illuminating Lance of Destiny, an Anti Fortress C plus to A plus rank noble phantasm, four hits, grants self ignore invincibility for one turn, activates first, deals damage to all enemies, recovers one ally's HP, recovers one ally with the lowest HP relative to their max HP by three thousand. And the damage is 450% at level 1 and 750% at level 5. And then the increase of own NP damage for one turn activates first. And it's 20% to charge 1 and all the way at the final charge it's 40%. So let's see. He has arts. He has his own... I mean the MP gain is kind of only on this. But he does also charge... Oh man he's still getting like... I guess he does the increase MP damage and charges his own MP gauge. Yeah, okay, that works. And he increases arts. Okay, yes. He's good. He's an a he probably not the best of AoE lancers for arts. I think that still goes to... To be fair, this is not a fair comparison. No lancer should actually be compared to this guy. Because he's uh, fucking built insane. They buffed him so much because nobody wants to use him. Fian Makul. Uh, or Fionn McCool over here, uh, is insane. Nobody wants to use this man, so they upgraded him to the point where he is an insane servant. Like, honestly, he's 
just stupid when you look at all the things he does here. This is probably still for you even get. I mean, it's only one turn. That his third go might actually be the weakest, and that's still a forty percent increase to Art's performance. Um, yeah, this is just a, a, a dumb. And he's only three hits too. Considering how much NP gain he gets from him, it's pretty crazy. Um, it's like I. It's possible before even Castoria. It was possible to loop with this guy. <laughs> I figured out a way to do it back in the day. He is definitely. Uh, one of the better four-star lancers in the game for f farming purposes. So I actually wonder how does he compare to some of the other ones? I know he's probably the one that comes to my head. The other one, all, the others are obvious, but they're all quick to me. Like obviously Parvati is amazing at it, but she's quick, so you don't, you know, not a lot of competition. Mysterious Alter Ego also very good at what she does. Actually, it tends to be that the four stars are usually the ones that are the best at right now that I look at it. Because the Valkyries, yeah, they're also good. They're quick. Is the only one they're missing one for Buster? Elizabeth is... I like Elizabeth in general, but I don't know if she's... Actually, maybe it might be... Say it again. What? Lancelot is the Buster farmer. Lancelot? For for Lancer? For four stars? Yeah, yeah, no, no, you're talking <laughs> four I was talking four stars, so that's why I was like, oh yeah, Fian, that's why I'm mentioning all the four stars. If I want to talk about five stars, it's a little bit different. It's obvious who the five star one is. Because <laughs> she's also being talked about today. But anyway, uh, I'm I'm digressing way too hard. My point is is that I think he's pretty cool. The bigger issue here is that he's have he has extremely big competition in the upcoming Lancer unit that's actually coming out. <laughs> So let's go over her. So yeah, I think he's a cool like side thing if you actually fail to get uh, Lancelot over here, Fairy Knight Lancelot. Um, it's not going to feel that way because they share the same class. And I know a lot of people who are probably going to be going for her are probably going to be sad to get Percival. Just like they just know that a lot of people who are summoning only for Percival are going to be really bummed out when they get Fairy Knight Lancelot instead of him. It's just the way of the gotcha sometimes. <laughs> but you should be fine. I think... I think he's a perfectly solid unit if the only problem is is that he's sharing a banner with <laughs> one of the best one for arts so let's go over her Millisane. she's next uh she is Millisane, aka tomlin lancelot on the na side or fairy knight lancelot if you're on the jp and then she's got some spoiler aka's that i can't mention <sighs> one quick two arts two buster her active skills are uh, Dragon Heart B increases. Uh, please stop. Leave me alone. Increase on attack for three turns. Reduces own damage taken by 500 for three turns. Increase own max HP for three turns. And then charges own NP gauge. That's uh, a 40% attack, 2,000 uh, HP, 30% NP. And let's move on to the second skill. Parry Dancer B increases own critical star absorption for three turns. In gains crit stars every turn for three turns. The absorption is 500% and it's 10-10 for both of the star uh, factors here. And then her third skill is Ray Horizon A. 500% chance to transform self into stage 3. Charges on NP gauge. Grants invincibility for one turn. 100% uh, NP gauge. I forgot about the 100% NP gauge. I knew it was a stupid amount. I just... Man... There's just certain things. I, okay, let's move on. Say, I, I remember now. Okay, so uh, when you're in stage three, it turns into an increase on NP damage for three turns, and the NP damage is thirty percent. And then it still grants self invincibility, but you no longer get that ability to charge your own NP gauge by that large amount. Uh, next passive skill: Magic Resistance B, Territory Creation B plus. Her first skill, no, her third skill is an anti-lancer attack damage aptitude, just reminding you once again, trust no one, not even your fellow class. And her noble phantasm is two, so let's get into it. First with the, uh, with the arts version, which is a five hit arts, deals damage to one enemy, increases their damage taken by uh, 1,000 for five turns, and then gains 10 crit stars. And then increases on MP generation rate for three turns. Um, the MP damage is 900% at level one and is 15,000 um, at level five. And the charge of MP rate uh, is 20% at charge level one. And then all the way at level five, it is 40%. 
And then her next Noble Phantasm is a Buster Noble Phantasm, um, which is a, not again, five hits again, Buster. Turns to a grant self ignore invincibility for one turn, deals damage to all enemies. It's now an AoE. Inflicts burn for a thousand damage for five turns to them. The damage is uh, 300% at level one, and then at level five, it's 500%, and then increase own Buster performance for three turns. And the Buster performance is 100% at, um, at 100% is 20%, and all the way at the final level, it is 60%. If you get her all the way to overcharge five, uh, that'd be amazing. So yes, that is what she does here. Uh, this unit is really damn good. There's like no, <laughs> there's really no denying how insanely stupid this unit is. Um, can kind of be used in, uh, yeah, I just, I for you know, I think for the most part I forgot how good she was because I really don't want to actually summon for her. Um, and the reason is, is that I know Anniversary is coming up and everything else, but I also really want her because she just seems so stupid fun, but I had to put her off to the side, because if I actually remembered what she did, it would make me want to do summons to potentially get them. It's a unit that can literally be used in so many facets. If you're a single target kind of unit, the obvious sign is to use the first one, and you can use her with Castoria at that point. You would kind of not be able to use the third, what? My bad. Let me close that off for a bit. You wouldn't be able to use the third skill unless it, you were in some desperate situation, in which case she would turn into Buster. Um, but even at that point, like if you're fighting one enemy, she still would probably be pretty strong regardless of anything. But then if you also look into that Buster one, if you actually build for full Buster with all the Buster supports coming up, she can do some crazy damage. She can get this... Um, Stage 3 version of it where she's constantly getting 30% because it's uh, only on a cooldown of 5 so it would be very easy to kind of uh, lower the skill rate because that's what uh, Vich does. This is she lowers it by 2 so it would be very easy to get this third skill. Actually all of her skills would be would come back including this one that charges MP gauge. This MP charger is at 30% which isn't bad. Um, I think typically for Buster it's 50% is the, is the, the key you want to kind of reach. But I think she would still be solid with that pretty sure at that point you may as well just use the 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 mystic suit just gives you 20 percent if you don't have enough nb gauge but and or if you're not using oh Ober <laughs> oberon which if you're using oberon then uh you know you know how to get that final bit of nb it's not a problem really cool unit like just design wise is super fascinating there's i wish they kind of did more units like this there's not a lot of units like this the only other unit that kind of has this ability where they have two nps is dr jekyll and mr hyde and it's really just kind of one np and then nothing <laughs> because he doesn't have a second noble phantasm he has one noble phantasm and then he changes and then he gets a super high hp berserker but who gives a shit about a high hp on a berserker so he just easily dies. <laughs> That's all that happens when you get all the way to the highest charge level with Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. It's very sad. And they'd never have done another unit like that up until this one. And I don't think they've done another unit like this since then. Like, the, the versatility of having the ability to go either be single target or AoE. And then also having, like, two different classes at that point. Not two different classes, but two having, like... One being arts focus and the other one being Buster is just not something they want to do a whole bunch, which I can understand. Also, the Noble Phantasm themselves, like the arts one, if you're focusing all in on arts, then it buffs arts. Like, it does what kind of arts wants to do, which is, uh, which we can look at right here. Um, it does what kind of what arts wants to do, which is like, get a bunch of crit stars, and then, which is something that arts typically isn't very good at doing. It does a lot of things, it can't get a lot of crit stars. Um, but also it increases the MP generation rate, which makes it easier for you to kind of loop her with a single target and constantly keep using it over and over and over again. But if you switch over to the Buster's side, then, like, you can ignore invincibility, you're just dealing damage to all the enemies around you. And then you're also increasing your Buster attack at the same time as that you're doing that. And Buster is all about just pure raw damage, <laughs> so it makes a lot of sense to me. Very cool unit, definitely worth having, and now we come to the part of the conversation where we say, hey, 
we're really close to anniversary. It's not this... By the time this comes out, which I assume is going to be the 19th, we're two weeks away from anniversary. So what does that mean? Should you go for her? I mean, yeah, if you care about her, you should obviously go for him. I'm always, I'm never going to stop you from caring about caring for a unit and going for them if that's what you want. If I was that kind of person, I would tell you to, you none of you should have summoned on Morgan, but I can't actually tell you that when I did it myself. So, <laughs> lead by example at that point. If you're going for Percival specifically and he's the guy that you kind of want the most, this is actually the best chance of you getting him because he'll be featured. So I can kind of understand going for that. If you're going for Lancelot and you specifically spend, though, you know, there's a pretty good banner with her that's coming up pretty soon. I don't think Lancelot has the same rate of return as Morgan, but I think she comes back fairly often just because of how much of a fan favorite she actually is. So let me look at the JP list real quick. Um, this is the reason, this is actually legitimately the reason why I don't want to summon, and there will be no summon video for her, even though I badly want her, and I don't have very good, uh, ways to stop myself in a lot of ways, except for, my, I guess, my brother, but no, actually my brother's a bad facilitator of my needs to summon. But what, what am I talking about? Uh, let me <laughs> look at, I need to look for anniversary. Sorry, I got distracted. <laughs> you Sorry, my brother catching strays and saying why. Uh, no, that's the the anniversary live stream. I hate that this oh man, this site not the greatest, but you know what? You make do with what we have. She comes back at the end of the year. She comes back at the end of the year, my brother says. So if you're someone, either if you miss her or you want to keep on saving for for after, because there's definitely a kind of lull. No, actually, New Year's is kind of cracked from what I remember. So <laughs> maybe not the most savings, but at least you'll be able to save a little bit more. This is the reason why. Because she's going to be on the GSSR. That's why we're getting her so early. Is because she needs to be on the G GSSR. And she's going to be on this one. Oh, no. She's not on the one with Morgan. I thought she was on the one with Morgan. Nope. No, that's a shame. Okay, so this is the manner that Melisande's on. Which features Ibuki, her, Abby, Muramasa. Which is still crazy, actually. Um, Summer Kiara, Van Gogh. Um, pervert. What is pervert's name? Do is it actually is it Doman? Ashaya Doman. Ashaya Doman. That is the full name. And Himiko. That's the banner they kind of share in. Um, I think actually for this banner, there's only like two that I don't want. Three if you count Himiko, because I like Himiko, but I don't need more NP copies. And I think it'd be funny if my Kiara got stronger. The one, uh, oh, I guess, uh, actually, I would like it if my Buki got started. Okay, I'm, basically, there's three misses for me, so it's going to kind of depend on the person how many of these are hits or misses for you. Actually, I have an MP2 Abbey. I can't summon on this. I'm 100% getting a third Abbey. So, no, I can't summon on this, which is unfortunate. Uh, I'm going to be doing the uh, Morgan one, which also features two units I don't want, mainly because I don't need MP2 for Castoria, even though I think it'd be funny. And I already have... Uh, Avenger Ushi over here, so I don't really need more NP copies for her. So I can get either Karen, Crane, or Morgan, and I like them odds. But if you're someone who's definitely going for GSSR, hey, if you like all the units on this banner, and you're already kind of deciding which one should I go for, there's nothing wrong with going for this one. And I think, let me see, what are the four and three on this banner? I think, uh, yeah, they have, oh yeah, Barg is on this banner, the Suna's on this banner, uh, Summer Ilya, Percival... Sif is on this banner, the Muppet Man, Saito, he's on here. It's not bad, it's not bad at all, I would say. Are they on both of these banners? Okay, these these units are shared between this and the Morgan banner, that makes sense. Um, so yeah, not a bad GSSR to kind of go for, I'd say. But again, that's also if you're paying, and if you're not paying, maybe it's a different thing, it's a different conversation. And I'm not saying you have to pay, but I'm just saying like, hey, I like them odds. <laughs> Spending a couple bucks on 15 St. Quartz and having a 1 in 8 chance of getting the unit that you want, that's better than using all your free-to-play Quartz most of the time. Unless you're just built different and you have insane luck, but yeah, so there you go. I think she's definitely worth summoning for if you're someone that cares about her. She's super good. There's no denying it. She's definitely better. <laughs> it's kind of a bummer, the, the, the best way to, one of the best ways to use her, because you didn't definitely use her with Castoria with her first Noble Phantasm. But if you want to use her second Noble Phantasm, you're going to need Buster support, and you don't want Merlin, because Merlin ain't going to cut it when you need <laughs> two Viches and an Oberon tech, the 
and an Oberon. He doesn't work because of Oberon. Yeah, the reason why, if you're wondering, hey, why doesn't Merlin work, my brother just said at the back, is because Oberon refuses to work with Merlin. <laughs> so, <laughs> they just decided to say fuck you to Merlin for Buster. I don't know why. <laughs> it seemed kind of unnecessary, but they did it anyway. So... That's the spanner. Feel free to tell me how you're, what you're going for. If you end up summoning, tell me how you did. I'm always interested to hear of how people did. Hopefully, it went well for you. Um, again, shout out to the one guy I know who's crazy waiting for Percival. I hope you are able to get him easily. It doesn't go too bad, and you don't get spooked. This is also going to be a very rough banner to summon for if you're not a big fan of both units. Because, like I said, both of them are lancers, and that's kind of the meanest thing Fago can do to you. Because at that point now, if one of the units that shares the banner is a unit you don't care about and it shares the the class, it means the chances of you getting that one and not the one you actually want are so crazy high, you may as well not even tempt fate. Like, this happened to me. Like, there's plenty of people who are going for Skahawk and they always go like... Though I think that was one time she was uh, she was featured at the same time as Liz and there was a lot of people getting angry at Liz. Because it's just not the unit they wanted. <laughs> So, good luck on that one, for sure. And that's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Feel free to always leave a like, comment, subscribe. It helps the channel a whole bunch. And until next time, peace out. Bye.